warm hello to everyone. I'm Sarah Cordwell from Benina International and today I have the great pleasure to show you how to install Qmatic on your studio frame. Just follow me step by step. The Qmatic automation system consists of Qmatic hardware with mechanical and electronic parts and a PC for operating the software. This video is for those of you who already have the studio frame or who are purchasing it new. Easily add it to an existing frame or add it at the end of the construction of a new frame. You can find important information about working with the Qmatic system in the manual. You can always find the current version of the manual as well as much more information about the machine and the accessories on our website at benina.com. Joshua will be assisting me today, as sometimes it is necessary to have another person to help you. The parts of the Qmatic automation system are delivered in two boxes. One is the components and the other is the PC. Open the packaging and unpack individual parts. Check that the delivery is complete with a list in the manual and place the components in a safe place. The tools not found here are included in the machine or the studio frame, which makes things easy. Don't worry, it might seem a lot, but there is a home for everything. Before installing the Qmatic hardware, the machine must be disconnected from the mains. Turn off the machine and unplug the power cable from the socket. Just a note, if you have installed optional mechanical channel locks on your machine, they should be removed before mounting the Qmatic hardware. This function is taken over by the Qmatic system. Let's start with the mounting of the front guide rails together with the safety brackets which secure the machine on the quilt frame. Remove the two right screws from the middle bracing. Align the left end of the first guide rail exactly to the centre of the frame. Screw it on with the removed screws and finger tighten only. Attach the right end of the guide rail directly to the frame. Don't forget to insert a washer between the frame and the rail to compensate for the difference in the height and screw it on. Finger tighten only. Repeat these steps on the left side. Align the two centre guide rails exactly to the centre of the frame and at the same height and now it's time to tighten the screws. Now we need to attach the rightmost guide rail. To do so, first remove the two screws from the right bracing of the studio frame. Screw the ends that will be attached to the bracing with the screws you've just removed. Finger tighten only. Attach the ends which will be attached directly to the studio frame with a washer and a screw. Do not tighten screws yet. Align the two lateral guide rails directly with the middle guide rails. Repeat these steps on the left side. Check whether the transitions between the guide rails are level and tighten all screws. Now it's time to attach the front X safety bracket and as a good tip, attach also the rear safety bracket as later it will be harder to get to the screw. Now we will mount the X motor which moves the machine from right to left and vice versa. Please refer for each section of this video to the Qmatic kit for studio frame assembly manual to identify all parts and tools needed for each step. Take out all screws of the bracing plate of the studio frame and use them to attach the new mounting bracket. Tighten all screws securely.
Now we need to attach an additional profile. For this, slide two nuts into the profile. Screw the profile flush with the bottom of the quilt frame and mounting bracket. A tip here is to use the removed bracing plate as a stop. Insert another two nuts into the profile. Since the motors are very heavy, it is best to get a helping hand for the following step, which in my case will be Joshua. Screw on the motor flush with the top edge of the profile. Once again, use the removed bracing plate as a stop. As a finishing touch, attach a cover cap. Now the belt cover needs to be removed to have access to the area where the belt is inserted into the motor. Lay the belt on the table and make sure it runs underneath the carriage. When inserting the belt around the axis, make sure that the tooth side is pointing inwards. Reattach the belt cover. Now let's go to the other side of the frame and mount the x-axis idler plate. Also here, the first step is to take out all screws of the bracing plate and use them to attach the new mounting bracket. Tighten all screws securely. Also on this side we need to mount an additional profile and for this first insert two nuts into the profile. Screw the profile flush with the frame to the mounting bracket at the bottom. Yes, and you guessed it. Use the unscrewed bracing plate as a stop. This helps you to become very accurate. Now insert another two nuts into the profile for the idler plate. In order not to scratch the studio frame surface, carefully attach a protective film that comes with your Qmatic system. Screw the profile flush with the top of the quilt frame and mounting bracket. And one more time, use the removed bracing plate as a stop. Now we need to insert the x-axis belt into the idler plate. For this first, remove the belt cover. Place the x-drive belt around the axis with the tooth side facing inwards and make sure that the belt is not twisted. To pre-tension the belt, have a look how Joshua loosens the screws and pulls the idler plate back so that the belt hovers over the table. All what is left to do is to fasten the screws and reattach the cover. Next we are going to mount the parking position stop and for this insert a nut into the profile. Place the top edge of the nut flush with the top edge of the profile. Now insert the long screw and tighten it. Attach the rubber cap and, as a finishing touch, attach a cover each on top and the bottom of the profile. The couplings are important to engage your Q-Series machine to the belts. Screw the coupling to the carriage, tightening the threaded nuts with one or two turns. After aligning the pins of the clamp flush with the belt, you can tighten the screws. Let's just check whether we have mounted the coupling correctly. Close the clamp, turning the lever so it is perfectly vertical. Pull lightly on the drive belt to make sure that the pin is locked 
in a recess of the belt. Well done! The coupling lever should not be blocked under any circumstances. Just as a tip, if the lever comes loose unintentionally, the following can help. Make sure that nothing is blocking the movement of the machine and that the rails are free. Ensure that the lever is exactly vertical and the drive belt is fully inserted into the coupling. Now we were coming to a very important step and this is tensioning the X drive belt. Release the X coupling. Place the X drive belt under the middle pin and, very important, close the coupling again. Now we need to use the adjustment gauge. You might have already asked yourself what this might be used for. Attach the adjustment weight in the middle of the quilt frame and with two rubber cords to the upper X drive belt. The belt tension is adjusted on the X idler plate with the two screws. The belt tension is set correctly when the adjustment weight nearly touches the lower X drive belt or hangs a maximum of one millimeter above the lower X drive belt. Now you can remove the adjustment weight. Open up the coupling, place the drive belt between the two upper and middle pins and close the coupling. Now we're going to mount the Y drive motor onto the front of the frame. Since it will be mounted to the carriage, some extra steps are necessary and the first one is to mount an additional profile to the carriage. Mounting the parts for the Y drive is easier when the machine is not on the carriage. We recommend removing the machine from the carriage, but I'm going to show you how it is done with the machine still on the frame. In total, we need to insert five nuts into the bracing, two in the lower, two in the upper, and the last one in the front bracing. Just watch me, as it might be slightly confusing. Now remove or push the machine backwards. Move the profile so that the left nut in the lower groove becomes visible through the opening in the carriage. Provide a screw first with a serrated locked washer and then with an additional washer and insert it into the opening tightened by hand. To make things easier afterwards, make also sure that the other two nuts in the bottom groove are positioned close to the left and right opening in the carriage. As before, provide a screw first with a serrated lock washer and then with an additional washer and insert it through the left opening into the nut. Tighten by hand and repeat for the right side. As a last step before tightening everything up, adjust the profile on the carriage, making sure it is five millimeters, a scant quarter inch away from the left edge. Just a helpful tip, use your five millimeter Allen key to measure the distance. No measuring or guesswork involved. And lastly, tighten all screws well. Now we can mount the Y drive motor. Joshua is going to help me with this step since the motor is just as heavy as the first one, but it's actually very easy. Simply attach the motor with two screws to the profile. Push the motor into position. And tighten the screws. Now we need to insert the Y drive belt, for which we need to remove the belt cover of the motor. Just like with the other belt, 
place it around the axis, making sure that the tooth part is pointing inwards. Lay out the belt on the carriage to the rear of the frame. Make sure the belt is guided underneath the machine, but above the X drive belt. Last step, reattach the belt cover. First prepare the profile with five nuts just as we did for the X idler plate. Now attach the profile to the carriage, this time in the middle of the carriage and with one other exception. Don't screw in the bottom left screw and save it for the next step, which is mounting the holder for the energy chain. The first step is to screw the end piece of the energy chain onto the holder. Make sure you use the end piece without studs for this step. Position the drag chain bracket underneath the carriage, making sure that the left edge is aligned with the carriage. Using the set aside screw and washers from before, screw it into the right side of the drag chain holder. And now use the screw with a serrated lock washer and additional washer you removed from the carriage and screw it into the left side of the drag chain holder. Every screw and washer finds its place. First we are going to position a small protective film. Make a mark at 2 1 8th of an inch, 54 millimeters from the right edge of the carriage and make another mark 2 and 5 eighths of an inch, 67 millimeters. Place the protective film from the right to the left, starting at the two and one eighth inch mark. Position the idler plate flush with the right two and five eighth inch marking and tighten the two screws only so far that the idler plate just about stays in place. As before, remove the belt cover plate to place the belt inside. Very important, make sure that the adjusting screw is loose. Place the wide drive belt around the axis with the tooth side facing inwards. Make sure that the belt is not twisted. Reattach the belt cover. To pre-tension the Y-drive belt, loosen the screws slightly and pull the idler plate backwards until the belt is taut. Additionally, we need to mount the cable duct to the right side of the carriage. First remove the cover of the cable duct and set aside. Then screw the cable duct to the carriage. Next, we're going to mount the Y coupling in the groove underneath the machine, which is simpler taking it from the carriage, but is feasible with the machine still on the frame. It is very important that you align the nuts perfectly horizontally on the coupling. Then feel the groove below the machine where to insert the nuts and where the Y coupling will be attached. Please refer to the manual for a better view. Actually, the best way to do this is to hug your machine. First attach the coupling only loosely, so it can still be moved to a distance of 2 inches, 50 millimeters, measured from the front stand profile. When the coupling is perfectly in place, tighten the nuts, ensuring with the help of one of the bracings we have removed earlier that the clamp is perfectly aligned parallel to the machine. Now open the clamp and pass the drive belt behind the black pins. To check the belt position, move the machine back and forth on the carriage. The teeth of the drive belt should not touch the inner pin. Additionally, the belt back should barely touch the outer pins. If necessary, correct the position of the drive motor and the idler plate. To close the clamp, turn the lever so it is perfectly vertical and pull lightly on the drive belt to make sure that the pin is locked 
in a recess of the belt. Now we need to tension also the wire drive belt correctly using the adjustment weight again. First release the Y coupling. Attach one loop end of the cord to the eyelet of the adjustment gauge. Then hook the adjustment gauge onto the rear drive belt from below and guide the cord under the front drive belt and over the edge of the carriage. Now hook the adjustment weight into the other cord. Almost there, stay with us. Now pass the cord coming from the adjustment gauge through the cord of the adjustment weight and hook it back into the hook of the adjustment gauge. Place the cylinder pin underneath the cord on top of the carriage. Move the cylinder pin a little back and forth so the adjustment gauge and adjusting weight align to each other. Adjust the belt tension with the adjustment screw on the Y idler plate, creating a gap between the adjustment gauge and the front drive belt of not more than 1 16th of an inch. The adjustment gauge must not touch the drive belt. Not so hard, is it? To check the belt tension, move the machine back and forth and check that the distance between the drive belt and the coupling remains the same. If the distance changes, change the position of the Y idler plate and or the Y drive motor until the belt is completely perpendicular and the distance remains the same. Now we are going to mount the Y safety brackets. Screw two securing brackets, each to the stand profiles, inserting the screw and washer from above through the opening and securing from below with a threaded nut. Do this for the left and right side. Now push the machine back and forward on the carriage and check that the safety brackets do not touch either the wheels or the carriage. Now we just need to mount the PC so you can plan your quilt projects and have it sewn out automatically. Won't that be great? As a first step, we're going to mount the PC holder. Don't forget to look up all those parts and tools needed in the manual. As a first step, an additional profile needs to be attached to the frame. Insert two slot nuts into the profile. Screw the profile to the side of the frame with two screws, inserting a spacer each between the profile and the side part of the frame. Make certain that the opening of the profile aligns with the height of the screw on the studio frame. This will allow access to the screw for height adjustment of the top rail and idle bar if needed. Insert another two slot nuts into the profile to attach the PC holder. Screw the PC holder to the profile at least 5mm, a scant quarter inch, below the top edge of the profile. Make sure that the cable holder points downwards. As a finishing touch, attach a cover to the profile and a cover on the left and the right side of the PC holder. Before mounting the PC to its holder, we need to screw in some spaces. Now you definitely need a helper to attach the PC as it is very heavy and holding it up and screwing is impossible. Adjust the tilt and the height of the PC to your liking and then don't forget to tighten the locking screws. Now it is time to get powered up. On the control cabinet there are six cables pre-mounted at the bottom and on the right side there are three sockets. Really helpful this time is to refer to the manual. 
as it has various diagrams to identify the cables and additional information for mounting. So you can follow the next steps better. I believe it is easier if I name the cables with the lettering used in the manual and not with their tongue twisting technical names. Place a control cabinet next to the frame, right side. Make sure the cables pass on top of the frame crossbar. Plug the machine power cable into the socket of the control box. Pull the cables and the power cable under the quilt frame to the back and lay them out on the floor. First we have to mark four of the cables and this is best done with a helping hand to pull the cable straight while measuring. From the strain relief of the cables, C6 and C9 measure 60 and a quarter inch, 153 centimeters, and mark the spot. Alternatively, you can measure 67 1 8 inch, 170 centimeters from the end of the plug. Measure 37 and 3 8 of an inch, 95 centimeters from the end of the plug of the cables C2 and C7 and mark the spot. Now connect the four cables at the markings with a cable tie. Squeeze the end piece with studs a little and snap it into the end of the energy chain. Place the cable chain next to the cables so that the end without any end piece is next to the cable tie that holds the four cables together. It is very important that all cables run parallel in the drag chain. Only then the drag chain will run smoothly. Press one cable after the other into the drag chain with your fingers so that the cables are next to each other and not on top of each other. Make sure that the cables do not cross. To facilitate the assembly of the cables, first mount only the two right energy chain guidances. Remove the two right screws of the middle bracing and use these screws to screw on the left side of the first energy chain guidance loosely. On the right side of the energy chain guidance, slide an angled mounting bracket between the frame and the energy chain guidance and tighten the screw only loosely. Screw the second energy chain guidance loosely to the right of the first one to the mounting bracket. Remove the screws of the right bracing and use these screws to screw on loosely the right side of the second energy chain guidance. Make sure that the two energy chain guidances meet and that the transition is even. Screw the two energy chain guidances loosely to the angled mounting bracket. Align the drag chain guidances exactly at the middle of the frame. Tighten all screws. Insert the energy chain into the chain guidance. Mount the end piece to the chain guidance. Paying attention to a parallel alignment. Tie the four cables and the end piece together with a cable tie. Cut off the end of the cable tie. Wrap the short spiral cable binding from the end of the drag chain to the left around the four cables. Guide the loose end of the drag chain above the mounted end. Move the carriage towards the end of the energy chain and hook the energy chain into the end piece. As a last step, fasten a cable tie around the four cables and the end piece. 
Where there is a right, there is also a left. So now we're going to mount the left energy chain guidances. For the following steps, first only hand tighten all screws and tighten them completely only at the end as the cable chain guidances still have to be aligned. Mount the third cable chain guidance aligned with the middle of the frame using the two screws of the middle bracket. Lead the connecting cables down through the opening in the energy chain guide. The cable bundle must not lie in the third drag chain guide. Slide an angled mounting bracket between the quilt frame and the energy chain guidance on the left and screw it on. Mount the fourth energy chain guidance to the left of the third one using the screws of the left bracket. Remove the two screws on the left side of the frame and use these screws on the left side of the energy chain guidance. Hand tighten only. Make sure that the two energy chain guidances meet and the transition is level. Loosely screw the third and fourth energy chain guidances to the mounting bracket. Now is a good time to tighten all screws. Slowly slide the carriage from one end of the quilt frame to the other and check that the rear security bracket does not touch the energy chain at any point. If yes, you will need to reposition. In the next steps, we are going to connect all cables to the motors and you will need to be careful not to touch the circuit boards inside the motors. A tip. To dissipate electrostatic charge, Touch a bare metal part of the studio frame immediately before plugging in the cable. Place the two cables with the strain relief sleeves, C6 and C9, in the cable duct on the side of the carriage. Close the cable duct with its cover you set aside. Loosen the three screws on the right and left side of the wide drive motor and carefully remove the cover. Insert the communication cable C6 through the smaller opening into the housing and plug into the middle socket. Be very careful not to touch the circuit board. Insert the power cord C9 through the larger opening into the housing and plug into the lower socket. Again, do not touch the circuit board. Snap both strain reliefs into place. Done, all that is left here is to remount the cover. Now we are going to secure the cables a little better. For this, remove the rear screw and washer at the top of the wide drive motor. Using a cable clamp, Run both cables through it. Mount the cable clamp with the previously removed screw and washer in the same place. Make sure that the cables do not touch the frame. If necessary, fix the cables with an additional cable tie to the cable clamp. Next, we need to connect the Q-Series machine. Plug the communication cable C7 into the second lower socket at the rear of the machine. Plug the power cable C2 into the socket below the on-off switch. Pull both cables backwards and combine them at a distance of 12 inches, 30 centimeters, to the end of the plugs with a cable protector and a cable clamp. On the back of the machine, first remove the screw at the bottom right. Screw the cable clamp with four washers in the right screw hole so that the cables form an arc to the right of the machine. Now remove the screw at the bottom left. Bring the cables together with a second cable protector and cable clamp. 
screw the second cable clamp with four washers into the left screw hole so that the cables lie straight on the right of the cable clamp. Wrap both cables between the left cable clamp and the energy chain holder on the carriage with a long spiral cable binding. Pass a cable tie through the two recesses on the energy chain holder and around all four cables. Tighten and cut off the end. Now it is important that you check cable routing. No cables or cable ties should touch the frame. If necessary, adjust and move some cables. In the next steps, we will connect the X-Drive motor similarly to the Y-Drive motor before. Remember, you will need to be very careful not to touch the circuit boards inside the motors. Good if you touch a metal part of the frame again to dissipate the electrostatic charge. Remove the three screws and washers at the top and bottom of the motor and remove the cover. Insert the communication cable C5 through the smaller opening into the housing. Be careful not to touch the circuit board. Now plug the cable into the upper socket. Insert the power cord C8 through the larger opening into the housing and plug it into the right socket. Don't touch the circuit board. Snap both strain reliefs into place. And lastly, reposition and screw on the cover. The control cabinet is too heavy for one person and in case you mount it alone, you could suffer back problems. The control box can be damaged if it falls down. Joshua will hold the control cabinet so that the holes of the angled mounting brackets are aligned with the holes on the frame. I only need to insert the screws with washers from below and tighten them. And here, I mean tight. Now let's plug in the PC. First plug the power cord into the upper socket of the control cabinet. Plug the cable into the external power supply unit and attach it to the cross bar of the right leg. Lead the power cable and USB cable to the PC and plug in both. Move the screen to the farthest possible distance from the profile to stretch the cables and tie them to the PC holder and profile with cable ties. Now we have to take care of all the loose cables underneath the frame. Bundle loose cables in different places and fix them with cable ties through the openings on the quilt frame. Wrap excess cable length behind the control cabinet into a loop and tie it together with cable ties, making sure that no cables are bent. Cut off all cable tie ends at the end. We have come a long way, and this is the proud last step of the mounting process. Plug in the power cord into the bottom socket at the right side of the control cabinet. Turn on the main switch, and all that is left is to start your Qmatic system. Please read the manual before starting the Qmatic system the first time. Turn the red emergency button in the direction of the arrow, which is the unlocked position. Push the green button for three seconds, Turn on the PC, turn on the machine. The system starts up and you can check all functionalities according to the manual. That's it, you're ready to go. We wish you all the best with your Qmatic system. Happy quilting.